Welcome to A Push Simplified. This video is gonna cover and briefly explain the major New Deal programs. So let's go. First, let's start off with my favorite program, the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC. Under the three R's of the New Deal, relief, recovery, and reform, this one can be categorized as relief. It created 250,000 jobs for men between the ages of 18 to 25, and was later opened up to older military veterans. They worked on environmental projects all over the nation. Sometimes you might see a trail in your local city, county, state, or national park labeled CCC. The program also provided room and board plus a salary of $30 a month, which works out to $500 to $600 in today's money. Many young men would send some or most of their money home to help their families. Next is the Federal Emergency Relief Administration, or FARA. It had a budget of $500 million to give to state and local governments in the form of grants. The grants were given out for state and local programs that would assist those in need. This is the beginning of cooperative federalism, where the federal government encourages state and local governments through grant money to pursue nationally defined goals. The Public Works Administration, or PWA, is a mixture of relief and recovery. The federal government granted $3.3 billion to provide jobs for the unemployed, typically on public projects like the building of schools, dams, refurbishing government buildings, and constructing national infrastructure. The National Industrial Recovery Administration, abbreviated NIRA, or NRA, but don't get it confused with the National Rifle Association. It relaxed antitrust laws and corporations, but in return, it wanted businesses to abide by certain government guidelines, including quality standards, production levels, prices, maximum hours for their employees, and minimum wages. The infamous Agricultural Adjustment Administration, or AAA. It is the well-known and controversial New Deal program that paid farmers subsidies and financial assistance to decrease the production of crops and the number of animals raised. Farmers' fields were plowed under and animals were destroyed. The idea was to help farmers by increasing the price of commodities they produced. So in order to do that, they needed to decrease the amount of those commodities in the marketplace. However, this comes at a time in which workers are severely struggling. So it was tough to see food go to waste and the government trying to increase price on food when many cannot afford to put it on their tables. While the AAA was controversial, the Tennessee Valley Authority was widely hailed this was a concerted effort to invest in rural areas and aid in their development. It resulted in dams being built on the Tennessee River to turn the river's water power into electricity. Other activities also included enriching the land, restocking bodies of water with fish, and in general provide jobs to residents of impoverished regions. This also helped to increase tourism to those regions. The FDIC, or Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, is a great example of reforming the economy to help alleviate the causes of the Great Depression. A major economic problem was the collapse of the banking system. When banks went under, many people lost all of their savings. So the federal government began to, and still does, insure bank deposits, which are savings accounts. So now, if a bank goes under, the government guarantees members they will receive their savings money back. The Glass-Steagall Act, another favorite of mine, is an additional way that they try to shore up the banking industry. It mandated that banks had to separate their commercial and investment banking activities, so no longer could banks loan out funds from savings accounts to stock market investors. This was an attempt to fix the margin loan problem. Sadly, it was repealed in 1999. The WPA was a massive relief program in which the federal government spent $4.8 billion on building projects, employing teachers, artists, writers, and actors. In total, around 8.5 million people were employed over the course of this program. Finally, we have a program that is still alive and kicking, which is the Social Security Act. Its aim was to provide a safeguard for elderly Americans in need of assistance in the form of direct cash payments. Also included in the payments were beneficiaries of deceased spouses and orphans, and expanded to provide aid for those individuals injured in industrial accidents.